Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Today we're going to be talking about the Frank Starling Curve. This is a foundational concept in medical physiology, something that plays into pretty much the day-to-day -day in the clinical arena. Uh, and it's something that's really important to understand uh, as many concepts kind of build off of it. So we're gonna talk about the Frank Starling Curve, kind of a basics or introduction to the Frank Starling Curve, starting out by talking about the myocardial muscle fiber, the sarcomere. Because to understand the Frank Starling Curve is to understand the relationship of the heart muscle and those cells, tension, stretch, strength, contraction, all those are why the Frank Starling curve looks the way it is. We're then gonna get into the curve itself. We'll talk about the ner normal curve, what affects that normal curve, what can shift it up, shift it down. Uh, then we'll do some concluding statements. So certainly an interesting video in our humble opinion. We hope you stick around to watch it. As a reminder, on our Patreon page, which we have linked in the video description, we will upload the video notes uh, as well as a advertisement-free video. And we're always on that Patreon page to answer any questions you have. So if you have an interest in the ability, certainly we would love to, to have you join our Patreon community uh, linked in the video description. No further ado, quick 30-second break for the introduction. Don't go anywhere. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. All right, the Frank Starling Curve. So the Frank Starling Curve is this concept in medical physiology. And it's a concept that the cardiac output, the stroke volume, how much blood that heart squeezes out of its ventricle is related to the filling of that ventricle. And if you are you know, feeling confused, all this is gonna make sense by the end. But to start, we gotta think about the heart, right? Here's a picture of a heart. We've kind of cut through and we're looking at the front of it, right? And this is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle, this is the left ventricle and the left atrium. And all this blue here is all muscle, because at the end of the day, the heart is a big muscle. And how that muscle works, just like your bicep muscle contracts, right, to move the arm up, the myocardial muscle cells contract as well. And the muscle of the heart is called the myocardium. Myo being muscle, cardium being heart. And the myocardium is made up of muscle fibers. And these muscle fibers are made up of sarcomeres or these kind of elongated cells. And we've drew, uh, drawn that down here. So what we see down here is if you were to kind of take a chunk out of this and you were to zoom way in, you would see these muscle fibers. And these are all cells. The blue is the cell nucleus. These are the junctions between the different cells. But they form these kind of elongated cells all connected together, right? And this is the myocardial muscle fiber, muscle sarcomere. And this muscle, as with the, your bicep muscle, stretches outwards and then contracts inwards. And when all these muscles contract together, that is actually what squeezes the ventricle because this ventricle here pumps blood out by actually squeezing inwards all these muscles. And then the blood in the ventricle gets pumped out, right? Because this chamber has squeezed down to be smaller because all these myocardial muscle fibers are contracting together to decrease the size of that chamber. And that's how the blood is pushed out into the aorta. So it's actually a muscle contraction that is squeezing and causing blood to then be ejected out of that ventricle. All right. So the relationship, the strength or the robustness of that myocardial muscle fiber contraction, how much it kind of contracts down and squeezes down is going to lead to how much blood is pumped out of that ventricle. All right. And we know if we scroll to the side here, cardiac output, CO, cardiac output equals the heart rate, which is how many times the heart is squeezing per minute times the stroke volume. And the stroke volume is literally the volume of blood that is squeezed out of the ventricle with each heartbeat. And the amount of blood that is squeezed out of the ventricle with each heartbeat is proportional to 
how robust these myocardial fibers, these muscle fibers, contract down. Because how much they contract down is going to drive how small that chamber gets. So let's just say this is the left ventricle. We're just gonna draw it as a circle even though it's not. And we're just gonna make up a number. Let's say the left ventricle, the size of it is 100. You don't need units because it's all hypothetical, but let's just say the size of it is 100. And those myocardial muscles contract with a heartbeat and the ventricle sh shrinks down. And let's say they contract so much that now the size of this ventricle goes from 100 to 80. What that means is that about 20 was pumped out. But let's say instead of going from 100 to 80, those cells, myocardial muscle cells contracted much more and the ventricle went from 100 to 40. Well, that actually now means that 60 was pumped out of that ventricle. So if we just say changes to 100 milliliters, 80 milliliters, right? This pumped out 20 milliliters. This is not true to size at all, not even close, um, as compared to 60 milliliters. So as you can see, the robustness, how much those myocardial muscle fibers contract down, drives how much stroke volume, how much blood is being pumped out of the heart, which then drives how much cardiac output or how much blood is able to circulate around. So there's a relationship here between the myocardial fiber stretch and their force of contraction. What do we mean by this? Well, I want you all to think about this kind of just conceptually, right? If the muscle fiber, this is going to be, we'll say this is the stretch size. These are the same exact muscle fibers as the stretch size. And this is the contract size. And if we go back to kind of our thought process over here about sizes, how much this bulk of muscle fibers contracted down would be represented by this distance, right? And let's just say, you know, it went from, uh, again, just making things up, we'll just say eight, and it went down to four, which means there was kind of two and two that it contracted down, right? But what if instead of contracting down to four, it contracted down to two? That means instead the distance it contracted would be increased, right? This would be shrunk down and you get an increase in cardiac output. Now, how robust this contraction is, is related to how much these fibers are being stretched. Okay, think about that for a second. The more they're stretched, the more tension in those muscle fibers. And the more tension in those muscle fibers, the stronger the contraction down, at least to a degree. Because too much stretch can lead to actually the decrease ability to contract. And this is if you just think of anything, right? Let's just think of a, a rubber band will break, but think about something that won't break. You stretch it more and more and more. Think about a rubber band. The more you stretch it, the more tension there is, and the more robust that contraction is if you let go of the rubber band. Okay, but eventually you'll stretch that rubber band so far and the tension will get so far that that rubber band will kind of get damaged, right? It won't be able to contract down whether it breaks or kind of loses its integrity. So there's this relationship here between stretch leading to more and more tension, which increases the strength of the contraction of the muscle fiber, but only to a degree. And if you stretch it too much, like down here, if we just look down here, if you stretch the same muscle fiber that we talked about up here, and here, if you stretch it too much, this now is not going to be able to contract down because it's been overstretched. So you've fallen off the Frank Starling curve. That's what we kind of say in the clinical arena. Did they fall off the Frank Starling curve? Well, what leads to how much this myocardial cell stretches? If we scroll over here, right, we have these cells. Again, we'll... Actually, let's go up to the heart. That might be easiest. We're just going to copy this heart. We'll just paste it again over here. Okay. So what, these are all myocardial muscle fibers, right? This is the muscle here, as we talked about. What leads to how much this muscle is stretching? Well, what is causing this muscle to stretch is how much volume, how much filling there is into the ventricle, right? Because if we just take this chamber and draw it over here, and we have, let's just say, 100 milliliters of blood, right? This is not at all true to size. Well, that's the size with 100 milliliters of blood. What if we double that, put in 200 milliliters of blood? 
this chamber would have to be bigger, right? It would have to stretch more. And let's say now we have 600 milliliters of blood in this chamber. The chamber would be super stretched because this is a chamber, a closed chamber. So the more volume in it, the more these muscle fibers are stretching. And we said how much the muscle fibers stretch leads to how robust the muscle fiber contraction is which then can increase the stroke volume and cardiac output, but to a degree, because once you get maybe closer to 600, you start to fall off that curve. The tension in those muscle fibers is too much, and then you have a decrease in cardiac output. So remember that concept, and we're gonna scroll down to the curve itself, the Frank Starling curve. So this is the Frank Starling curve, okay? I'm just gonna delete the things up here, and this is how we're gonna tie all these concepts together, and hopefully it'll all start to make sense together. So the Frank Starling curve is a curve that is looking at the stroke volume. Remember we said stroke volume is how much blood the heart is pumping out with each heartbeat, right? So how much that ventricle, how much blood the ventricle is pumping out of it with each heartbeat. And it's as compared to the preload. And the preload is a term to describe how much volume there is in the ventricle before it squeezes. And as we mentioned over here, the amount of blood in the ventricle before it squeezes is driving how much stretch there are of those myocardial fibers. And as we talked about over here, how much stretch there is in the myocardial fibers increases the tension, which then increases the strength of the contraction, but only to a point because with too much stretch, too much tension, you actually start to lose the muscle fibers ability to contract. And that's what this curve is describing. So just take the black for a second. I'm just gonna erase, uh, I'm gonna erase the blue, I'm gonna erase the green. And we're gonna say that the black is normal. All right, and what we have here is that as the preload increases, the stroke volume is increasing, right? Because those myocardial fibers, if we just draw some here, right, those myocardial fibers are stretching as the preload is increasing. And we said with stretch increases tension and with increased tension, there's an increase in stroke volume because those myocardial fibers with more tension can contract more robustly and pump more blood out of the ventricle. But then we get to a point where this stops increasing, it kind of flattens out. And this is when we're starting to meet that critical threshold where more preload, more volume in that ventricle before it contracts, more stretching of that ventricle is no longer increasing tension to a degree where it will increase stroke volume. It's starting to kind of reach that max capacity of myocardial fiber tension. And then after that, you actually fall off the curve and that with more preload, you actually decrease the stroke volume. And that's when that tension has just gotten too much for those myocardial muscle fibers. They're stretched too far and they cannot contract robustly. So the stroke volume starts to decrease once that preload gets too high or once the volume filling that ventricle before the ventricle contracts is too much and it stretches those fibers too much so that they are over tense, overstretched, and as such cannot contract down robustly. All right, and that's kind of the normal curve. So with more preload, you get more stroke volume because those myocardial fiber cells are stretching with more tension and thus able to contract more robustly and pump more blood out. But then at some point you get to a point where more stretching those myocardial fibers is not improving their ability to contract and eventually they're overstretched and you fall off the Frank Starling curve and you start to get a decrease in stroke volume with more ventricular preload or more ventricular filling before contraction or more and diastolic volume of the ventricle, right? Diastole being the filling of that ventricle before the ventricle squeezes in systole. All right, but when we talk about the Frank Starling curve, we talk about different iterations of it, right? You might've heard that the Frank Starling curve can be shifted upwards and it may actually look like this. And what does that mean? Well, what that is showing is that at similar preloads, you actually have higher stroke volume, right? If we were to just give this numbers, maybe the stroke volume here is 500 and the stroke volume here is 1000. Again, just making up these numbers, but it's at the same preload. It's at the same preload of 50. So why is the stroke volume higher at the same preload? 
Well, there's certain things that can affect the myocardial fiber's ability to squeeze their contractility. And some things would be, let's say the patient's on an inotrope. Inotropes tend to be beta, well, they can be a couple different things, but they tend to um, affect signaling molecules in the myocardial fibers that have that myocardial fiber contract more robustly. Things like dobutamine or milrinone can shift that curve upwards. Because let's say you have a patient who's got heart failure, they're in cardiogenic shock, their heart is not able to squeeze that well, and they're not able to pump blood around their body well enough. You might put them on this inotrope so that at the same preload, you're actually getting more squeeze, more robust contraction, because they're on an inotrope, helping those muscle cells contract, so that increases the stroke volume at the same preload, okay? Also, things like decreasing afterload, this is a more complex topic. The afterload is the resistance the heart is pumping against. Um, so if you decrease the amount of resistance the heart is pumping against, it's able to have a more robust contraction and more robust stroke volume. But you also can have a downward shift in the Frank Starling curve, all right? And the Frank Starling curve maybe would look like this. And now at this 50, instead of it being 1,000 or 500, it's actually now 200. And these are things like heart failure, right? Patients whose ventricles and their muscles are damaged so they cannot squeeze as robustly to start with. So at that same preload of 50, they're getting less, less stroke volume because their heart fibers are already damaged, okay? And what these patients do is they fall off the Frank Starling curve more quickly. Right, so let's just put here, at this preload, their stroke volume is already going down, whereas these ones are still kind of going up or at least plateaued. And that's why sometimes decreasing preload can improve stroke volume. Sometimes diuresing patients with heart failure, giving them a diuretic so they pee off some fluid. If they pee off fluid, they'll have less preload or less end diastolic volume or less blood going into that ventricle. Um, and that might actually shift them back to a higher cardiac output, right? So let's say this preload is at 200, right? And their cardiac output is here. Maybe diuresing them to a preload of 160 might actually increase their cardiac output, increase their stroke volume, even though you're giving them a diuretic, you're decreasing the amount of volume in their system. You're having them pee fluid off, okay? Um, so there's things like increasing afterload can do this as well. Again, kind of stuff that's not uh, uh, outside the scope of this kind of basic introduction discussion. So when we're talking about the Frank Starling curve, we're talking about this relationship between the myocardial fibers, which are the muscle fibers of the heart wall. And we're talking about this relationship between tension and then strength of contraction. And if you think of a rubber band as that tension increases, the strength of contraction increases until you get to that point, right? Where more tension actually decreases the ability for these myocardial muscle fibers to contract back down. And that's when their stroke volume starts to decrease because they're unable to contract back down robustly. Now, at the end of the day, it's just a matter of you know, physics and, and geometry, right? If your ventricle is a certain size and it has a certain volume in it, right? Stretching bigger can pump out more volume, but then you get to a point where you're stretched so far that those myocardial fiber cells can't contract down and can't pump that volume out, okay? So this is an introductory lecture. Um, the concepts here are very complex, and the physiology here is really complex. So we used kind of some larger models to discuss it, although certainly those models are incredible incredibly intricate um, and the details if you get to kind of the nth degree with some of these things don't always line up with some of the broader concepts but this is a, a good way to remember it and it does kind of establish the foundations for understanding this Frank Starling curve. Hopefully this was helpful. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Subscribe, hit the bell button, check out our Patreon page, whatever you all would like. Uh, in any case, stay well, keep learning and we hope to see you next time.